James Kahn is one of the UK's most successful and dynamic entrepreneurs. He's amassed an £85 million fortune through creating global recruitment businesses and from his private equity empire in London's Mayfair. With an impeccable track record of creating and managing companies, he's now taking this first-hand knowledge on the road to mentor six of the UK's most vibrant small and medium-sized enterprises. He's on a mission to navigate the entrepreneurs through the challenges they face, to seize market opportunities and to boost their bottom line. With James's nearly 30 years of business expertise, will the young companies make the change or stick to their ways? The business class begins here. Today, our entrepreneur has reinvented herself, moving from an author and entering into the baby food market. Joining me now is James Arvadik, entrepreneur and founder of Goo, and also Alison Stewart Allen, CEO of International Marketing Partners. Welcome to the business class. Great, thank you, James. Welcome. Okay, James, let's take a look at the sixth company in our series, a company on a mission to improve the taste and quality of baby food, Annabelle Carmel. Hi, I'm Annabelle Carmel, and I founded Annabelle Carmel back in 1991. We employ eight people, we're based in London, and our annual turnover is 9.75 million. We provide healthy food for children that taste great. And my business is split into two sides. I have Cooking for Children, which looks after my books. And then we have Annabelle Group Holdings, which looks after all the food business. So James, you've seen the company profile. Annabelle is here and waiting in the green room, but what are your first impressions of the business? Thanks, Carolyn. Well, I think Annabelle in the UK has become a household name, a real success story waiting to happen. I think that the question for me would be, is when you've got a brand that's doing so well, why are we not generating more volume from this? You know, when I look at the numbers of this business, great person, great brand, but are we really denting into that £600 million market? Because I think where, where Annabelle currently is, is probably around the £10 million mark. What do you think is lacking here, Alison? Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities um, for her business to better engage with that fan base. So, uh, you know, you could maybe sell more to the current customer, or you sell more to more customers, I think there's a chance to sell more to more customers. James, what percentage of that market do you think could be premium of the 600 million? I would uh, pitch it around 25% of the market. Okay, so if you say 25% of the market, that's a business the size of 150 million. Exactly. And currently, she's probably at around kind of 8 to 9% of that market. Mm. So something's not connecting. I think I've got an idea on this. Uh, I mean, if you look at that 600 million market, most of that is an ambient baby food. Actually, where um, Annabelle Carmel uh, has got a lot of facings in store is in the chilled ready meals area, which is actually quite a small sector of the baby food market. It actually is, is more toddler food than baby food. So I think there's a real bigger, bigger opportunity in the ambient baby food category, which um, is where the bulk of those 600 million sales are. All right, in each episode, we look at the two biggest challenges the entrepreneurs have flagged up to us. Here's Annabel Carmel's first one. I sacrifice growth to protect our equity, but there's some wonderful opportunities that have come our way lately and some interesting people who offered us funding. So I see it's a bit like a marriage. How do you find the right partner to work with you to grow your company? So James, how will Annabelle Carmel find the right investor for her business? Well, Carolyn, firstly, Annabelle is a very backable individual and has no constraints about the source of funding I think she can get access to. So I think one of the key things is to find an investor that's completely aligned to her objectives. What are the ambitions of the business? And also, what, what kind of innovation and what creativity can she use? I mean, one of the areas that for me probably would work very well for this business is actually crowdfunding. She has a thousands of enthusiastic people that love what she does, who have expressed their interest in all of the social media, who were uh, endorsing her through newsletters, etc. Why not go to them and say, we need 10 pounds off 
every you know one of you you get a piece of our business we get to raise the capital you feel you have a, a stake in what we have you know where we're going in the future so Alison are you saying let's convert the mothers into investors why not why not could that work James I think that's a great idea I mean it really kind of galvanizes your your customer base and turns people into much more loyal consumers so it kind of ticks a lot of boxes doesn't it in a minute, I'm going to grab Annabelle, but first, James, let's take a look at her second challenge. As a small company that focuses on taste and quality, how do we compete against the big giants in terms of volume and being competitively priced? I'm not sure that actually Annabelle should be competing with the multinationals. Annabelle is associated with a niche, classy brand. I don't really know that associating yourself with mass market or cheapness is really where her brand should be. I think Annabelle actually is a well-established and highly regarded brand in her own market. James, from a commercial perspective, if you haven't quite cracked the UK market, should we be putting all your resources in expanding to the US? We've already established that she's only kind of, you know, she's a drop in the ocean here. Get it right here and then go further afield. Yeah, so I don't think I'd do that. And, and the reason I wouldn't do that is because if you're trying to ramp up and bring this business to a much bigger scale, then you're gonna be able to do that more easily in a market of 300 million who do speak similar languages to British, not the same, but close. Uh, we do have a fragmented grocery system uh, in the US, but we do have retailers that are across the country, for example, Walmart, for example, Target. So I think provided she's geographically focused in the US, the numbers are there, and that's the thing that's really very different about this market. Do you agree with that, James? I would leave that to someone who comes to buy the business for a huge multiple as a massive opportunity that they can then exploit at a later date. So, James, essentially you're saying that if Annabelle can beat the competition, the big ones, the Danons, the Nestles of this world, join them, be taken over by them? No, let's go back to the real question. Is how is she going to compete against these guys even in the UK market? And what I would say is that she competes on quality and not on price. And going back to the kind of, you know, tiers of branding, and most premium brands are actually in premium economy. In other words, you can't be that much more expensive than the, the economy seats, but you're a little bit more expensive. So you command that kind of premium. Because you still need volume, don't you? You still need volume. Yeah. Okay, we've got Annabelle waiting in the wings. Before we bring her in, though, let me give you a quick recap. We now understand more about the baby food industry. We've looked at one of the few independents in that market. Our mentors have weighed in on her biggest challenges. It's time for our experts to meet Annabelle Carmel. Annabelle, welcome to the business club. Thank you. Good to see you. Such great advice. This is James. Hi, Annabelle. Hi. Annabelle, welcome to the business class. When we look and debated the business, one of the things that we identified, it's such a big market, mm. and, and your brand is probably the strongest brand in that space. What do you think is holding you back from really getting those volumes to a much higher level? I think that my mistake would be to think that I compete with the other brands. And I compete on a different level, really. My brand, as you said, is up here. My food is kind of down here. And I think that I need to do other things as well as food, and that, as you said, diversification. But not necessarily going into toiletries and things like that, but the community. I think building the community and the trust and the education for mums. I've been very successful in my books and my app. And I think that you know, embracing mums and looking after them is what I do very well. And I want to help them with maybe not just feeding, but sleeping, crying, and all the issues that mums have. And building that community will help me in building everything that I do, whether it's in supermarkets or wherever it is. We've almost come to the end of the show, but as promised, here's the Twitter question for you, James. Imran Shabir tweets, what are your recommendations to speed up the growth of an online business such as web design? James, what do you think? I mean, that's, that's quite an interesting one. Web design is a very common area now. There's a lot of businesses in that space. There's a lot of competition. If you want to try and get your name out there, I think you need to demonstrate what you do that, that's your USP. You know, demonstrate something that you can do that makes a difference to a small business. But also remember, you've got to be competitive. So I think my advice would be identify what your USPs are, make sure that there's clear differentials, and be competitive out there. And I think if you can do that, 
use the web yourself to market that proposition and get that word out there, get your brand known to the SME community that you're going to be targeting. Thanks, James. As ever, great advice. If you want to ask James a question, tweet us using hashtag CNBC Biz Class. That's it from me. I'm Carolyn Roth. And I'm James Khan, and we'll see you next time when we wrap up this series of The Business Class.